So I want to point something out before I get into this. This team comp they have on attack is not that good. And I'm going to talk about it right away from the get-go because this team comp they have is a gold team comp. Which is fine because this is what I expect. I expect the comps in gold, you know, obviously a little bit of silver, to be a bit hammered. I expect them to be different. I expect them to do whatever. I want to talk about something right now, guys. We're not going to make fun of mechanical skill. I don't. I think that I'm going to. I'm going to point out that mechanical skill is important in this in this vod. I'm going to point out that it's you know good to work on your mechanical skill. Um, but mechanical skill comes with time and practice, right? Like I can't just say, "Hey, aim better." Like yes, obviously there needs to be better aim in this. Um, <clears throat> all that stuff. But what makes you a good player at the in long term? Long term, short term, you can carry yourself with aim all day long. And you know what? I'm going to tell you right now from watching the first few minutes, definitely start to figure out what your right sensitivity is and working on your aim in general because that's a big part of it, right? And remember that D.Va is about spread. D.Va isn't just about like the crosshair itself, like the little crosshair. It's like, like you shoot him in the head and it's a headshot all the time, right? Like it's, it's a big giant circle. Um, so you have spread on D.Va that you need to do. So you do need to work on that. But there's going to be a lot more. There's going to be a lot, a lot more. There's going to be a lot of things that I'm looking at now where decision making will eventually lead to better play in general. And overall, as you become a better player, the decision-making factor and the aim factor will make you a better player. There's a plenty of players who can get high levels by just purely aim, and then they just their decision-making is awful. And every decision they make, they get frustrated at people because their aim isn't carrying them anymore. Their aim is they're not able to one-clip people on Tracer, and they're mad and angry, and they're like, oh my god, you guys suck. And they'll just be like that. They'll say that. And it's like, well, you're, not, you're relying purely on one-clipping people and your aim. If you made better decisions, you made you worried about map control, you worried about doing this and that, then in reality, you'll just do better. But they rely so much on that aim. So what I'm trying to do for you is get that balance, right? Finding that balance is really what matters. Um, get better? I mean, ranked. And I know it is, is unfortunate. So it's finding that balance, right, that we want to find for the player. So that's like a little bit of a, a pre-thing to this and not to when you watch this. You can keep that in there if you want to. You can put this part in there. If you guys ever hear me bring up Noctu, Noctu is my editor, so when he watches back the VOD, um, he kind of edit, edits the stuff out that I want, and I'll say Noctu, edit this, edit that. It's just, it's just easier for him. So um, just remember that. And you go, well, what are you talking about? I play Reinhardt. Um, you know, uh, like I play Reinhardt. Um, I can't aim. I know. When I, when I say I can't aim, is like you, you have nothing to aim with. You have fire strikes, and you have, you know, like... That's it. I'm not saying like you can't aim if you're a Reinhardt player. I'm saying like you're saying you don't have that capability on Rhine. But your Ryan, your your decision making, your shield management, your fire strikes, you not playing anything like me, is a good way to get good at Rhine. Because my Ryan's awful, right? So there's ways to get better at Ryan that don't it requires that decision making, it requires all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. <clears throat> I anyway. So, are you referring to a certain front line McCree? I give Juana the crap all the time for the front line. Um, anyway, what's up, Jellyfish? Did I miss anything? Uh, remember, if I miss a sub or anything, Jellyfish, thanks for the features prompts. I appreciate that. Sorry that didn't pop up. I just turned my alerts off, but thank you so much, Jellyfish. I appreciate that. I'll, I'll do it at the end of it. Um, let's continue on now, though. I just wanted to give you a little bit of that, and let's continue on with the stuff here. Let me just check my phone very quickly. Text me. Are we good? All right. Let's go. <clears throat> Dude, let me find a good volume for you guys. Hello. It's gonna be a little bit laggy at the beginning. I thought it was my computer, but it was actually just a VOD. I think it's because he's turning the stuff on. Really good welcome in by his teammates there when he said hello. A lot of people responded well to him. Uh, there's two out of voice chat. It's an Arisa. See, this is what I'm talking about team comp wise. Um, are they gonna be a thing now? They're gonna be something I do occasionally okay. uh, for the YouTube. I'm gonna stay with Diva. For the two. We have an Arisa. Um, I want to point out that one. This comp is absolutely terrible. This isn't Junkertown. Uh, two, um, this isn't Junkertown. And three, this isn't Junkertown. So, Arisa Diva on the beginning of this map, I guess uh, if you remember, pro teams used to play it. But at this, at this level right now, it's a little bit different. Like, this comp, you, you used to see that. You used to see people run Arisa Diva, Arisa Hog, like in pro play, like uh, sometimes on attack. But as the meta shifted a little bit, it's got a little bit different. Um, Arisa would benefit from speed boost. You want Arisa, you want to speed boost through, right? Like, all you're doing here is breaking shields. Hey, so, oh, we have, somebody said hi. Uh, McCree junk rat. So that's really it's good. looking weird. Yeah, Riddick even see even Riddick thinks it's weird. Not bad, but weird. Okay, he said not Why bad. Is it weird? I don't know. It's just a weird combo. <laughs> I There's not, not a lot of uh, not a lot of compliments within the team. Oh boy. 
Okay. Very interesting comp, like but really good once again, I want to point out that like it's at this level, so you can't expect but that's things not to be amazing. Bad. Mm -hmm. okay, let's go right so right away, I want to show you something wrong here, and this is going to be something I want to talk about right away. You're running this comp. There's a Hansa. You ready? Do we want to go to that little room over to the like to the right, and then we just go around? Okay. Uh, so focus that round shield down. Yeah. Let's we'll talk early about this, because this is something I want to talk about before we even get into everything, right? Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. 15 seconds into the game, you can see their team comp, okay? And they're running a very ground-based comp. Now, you look at this comp, you look at Arisa, Junkrat, McCree, and you think shield break, right? You think just break shields, break shields, break shields. Okay, I understand that. That makes sense, right? Like, you want to break shields to, to make plays and get better, you know, to just basically get, get space in there. The problem... Is a very strong background noise? What? Anyway, the problem is that you have an Orisa comp. And you're just going to break shields and then you have your shield break, like, broken because they're running a Roadhog Reinhardt. Like, there's, a, there's a Roadhog and a Reinhardt on their team. Okay? Which means that naturally, you're going to break shields and then they're going to break your shield and you're going to get nothing done. So what you need to do is you need to pull pressure, right? And you go, what do you mean pull pressure? You need to start flying into the left-hand window and get behind them and pull them away from the choke. To get your Arisa through the choke without a Lucio, because you're running Moira Anna, you need to get through the choke. How are you going to get through the choke? Like, how are you going to get through the choke if you're both just standing at the choke, right? So as a D.Va player, you want to use your mobility to get behind them. And not even, like, you don't have to do anything. All you need to do is maybe touch the point. You know, shoot some rockets in from behind, and already they're panicking. There's a diva in. There's a diva in top right. There's a diva in top right. Okay, I'll, I'll take care of the diva. But you pull people away, and you start to bring the numbers down, right? Like the comp you're running isn't that effective. And in reality, what's going to end up happening is is you're just going to rely on solo plays like junk rat getting like a, you know a two man tire kill because you have a junk rat on your team, right? So you're just waiting on these like plays that may never work, right? So you're literally waiting on plays that may not work, when in reality you can create some pressure in the back line and then create more space for your teammates, right? Like you become a space creator in this type of comp, right? Like that's what you're doing. Um, now you don't always have to do that, and I think you're gonna take the first point, but my point is, is that, and the reason why I think you're gonna take first point, it literally says victory up here, so. That's why I figured you're gonna take the first point. But we'll see what happens as we go on here, so. Can you up? Oh, okay. Our main tank is down. I'm trapped. I can't get back. Ooh, thanks for keeping me alive. Okay. So as you can already see, <laughs> spoiler. I mean, it's fine, dude. Um, win or lose, the all it matters is we're working on the gameplay in general. Anyway, so if you look at this, like already, you're kind of just. I'm not going to say doing nothing, but you're really doing nothing, right? Like, it seems like you're doing stuff. You're holding your defense matrix. You're shooting rockets at them. But in reality, what are you doing? You're really doing nothing because you just don't have – there's no value for – this is why, like, I would go Zarya, um, Ryan at the beginning because you can go through the choke and get through there fast. Or ask for a Lucio, right? This video will, this will be on YouTube, okay? So I would like for you to try when you're in this situation to go top left and fly into the window – all the way to the, the mega on the top left and just pressure them. You can stay up top there, you can pull them back, and what that does in reality for you overall is give you that space and allow these people that are sitting here at the car trying to you know, get, a, get a ride in this van to go to the point, you'll give them that space and they'll feel more comfortable, right? That's my opinion, but we'll see what happens. And Peanut Butter, thank you so much for welcoming back. I appreciate it. So. Now this... There's no way for me to kill myself over here, is there? Watch this one, guys. We need to push. Wait, what? Oh, I have 50%. Just push. Okay. I'll be back in a second. I was. I got one. <laughs> so
So anyway, so for anybody who doesn't know, when you play Diva, when when you play Diva, um, you can switch heroes and spawn um, to to get your to basically get your mech back for free. Now I want to point something out. You asked yourself, is there somewhere I can jump off the map? Well. If you really wanted to reset yourself, stand at the choke and just stand there. They'll, they'll kill you. But remember that you're also, they just lost their Reinhardt, right? So you have the availability to actually stay as a baby diva and try to farm up on them with no Rein shield, right? So you actually could have just sat at the choke and at the very worst you got killed and then you'd be back in your suit no matter what, right? Like you give them, like you just give up right there, right? Um, if you do want to go back to spawn and you want to change heroes to get your suit back, what you need to do is switch heroes and then switch back to diva. You just went to spawn and then hit this, the menu and then didn't choose a hero to switch off of. So basically the strategy is that sometimes like, so you have like 20% of ultimate, you don't, you can just give that up. I think he was at about 40%. I didn't get to see the numbers or whatever. Uh, you switch heroes and then switch back to D.Va and then you'll have your suit back. Um, you don't just hit the, the select menu and do that. So um, I thought that was pretty funny when I saw it. I was like, oh, it was, like, it, was more, it was more cute than anything. It was just like, that's cool, man. I like, I like the idea of like helping people get better in that sense because like, you know, you see these things that people do on stream or on YouTube, but there's no explanation for it, right? Like, you'll see me go to spawn and switch heroes sometimes, but, like, it doesn't really register in your mind. Like, you think you just go to the menu and then hit the button, right? <laughs> so, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, either, either A, go to the choke and just die, and you'll get your suit back. Um, but I would recommend go, trying to get your suit back up. They had no Reinhardt anymore. The Reinhardt died really early. So, just get your suit back up. Um, you'll be fine with that, in my opinion. Um, so... Not to edit this part out for a second. Just by the way, guys, when you sub right now, I don't have the alerts up, but Viper Fan, thank you so much for the free just Prime sub. Um, apologize, I just don't have my alerts up to these because it's going to go on YouTube. So, anyway. <clears throat> tire, tire. Got it. Nice. Also nice. Let's, let's go. go, let's go. Their junk rack got a 3k, and they took the first point. So, team. Okay, so, 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 so. good job. I mean, like I said, there's a lot you could have done differently there, and I think we learned from that. So, you've got enough faults to win. So we're at about 70 on your ult. Um, yeah, we do. I'm back in mech now, so. And I have a place I can just kill myself now. So it's good. Shit. Are we going mid or are we going right? Your McCree died early here, so. I wouldn't really try to overpush like this, but going forward trying to bait out ultimates is always a good idea when you have like a 6, 5, 5, 6. You already know they have ultimates to begin with, so baiting out ultimates here isn't a bad idea. Ate the Hanzo? Um, I, I have one question to you. Uh, what's with the... I just wanna, I, wanna, I want you to uh, help me with this. Why are you... Are you trying to melee to cancel your flight? Um... And two, I am super impressed that you ate the Hanzo. The fact that you not only ate the Hanzo ultimate, but also ate the Hanzo, that's impressive. I actually like that. That's super, that, you know, that's something I'm going to pick up for myself. That, that's amazing. Um, really good eat there, though. And once again, this is what I was talking about. Not only were you able to go in there with a 5v6 when they had a bunch of ultimates, right? Now, if you know they have no ult pool, right? And I do this in rank all the time. Like, if you watch my stream and watch my games... I will call for these type of plays when we're in a 5v6 because people still have the tendency just to hit their Q button. And at lower levels, I imagine people are very, there's not much alt management going on. It's like, hey, I got my ultimate, I'm going to use it type of thing. So when you have these 5v6s, <clears throat> it's good for you to say to the, your teammates, even though they probably won't listen because it, it is gold. You could say, hey, let's go in and take a fight and not use many ultimates. Not use, maybe use one ult max if it's, like a, it's a throwaway ult, but use nothing and bait out their ultimates. So you, not only did you go in there and force an ult, you managed to eat their Hanzo, so it's now a 5v5. And on top of that, you know, you guys are all set up for the next fight. Like, you have a good fight going into the next play. Right? So, I, I kind of like the idea of doing that. Um, but, yeah. Just wanted to point that part out, so. Yeah, uh, once this uh, once this Zen is done ulting, I'm going to throw my ult in there. So, you could make this call it, you're going to, once this Zen is ulting, you're going to throw your ult there. Now, I have a feeling you're going to call... Um, not to do it after the, de the death there, but you were down near McCree still, and your teammates were a little bit low on HP to begin with, so I wouldn't actually try to make that play next. I would actually just talk about regrouping. Once again, it's this is not meant to... How do I say this? Um, I don't expect you to think that way right away. I'm just trying to develop good habits for as you get better as a player, right? Because it's, it's easy to say to you, 
just get better forehead, right? Well, I'll just get better, right? And listen to what I'm saying, you'll get better. But that's not the case. Like, it's all about developing good habits at lower levels so that when you get to higher levels, you don't have to break too many bad habits, right? <laughs> like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's you have to really make sure that you're developing these good habits. So all I'm trying to give you, give to you is developing these good habits at lower levels. And as you get better and, and make these decisions better and, and get better with your aim and get better with your movement and all that, you'll be able to take that forward, right? And just get better at all. But no, I'm just, you know what I mean? Like, we can move in just on eat that? the enemy. He already did, he already ate Hanzo. Yeah, lost on a yep. set. Um, I do want to say you do need to work on your flight control quite a bit. Yeah, um, and yeah, that's yeah, fine, yeah, it will take time. It. Like, go after him when he does that. People are going to probably go, why didn't that defense major exceed? So because the hook was at an angle and they pulled him in, you're only eating about half the shots. The rest of them, because the defense majors can't really, you can't really DM this wall right here, it's going to hit him, and that's why he died of that. Like, generally, if you were, like, here, which you weren't there naturally, but if, say, you were in this spot here, it would have you would have probably protected your teammate. But because you were at that angle, it just can't, it can't eat all of it. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> I'll talk about the flying more after. Okay, so I need to. I, I want to know. Can you uh, before I move on? Italy, what, what's what's with the melee thing that you're doing? <clears throat> Excuse me, by the way. What's that melee thing? Are you trying to cancel your flight, or has it just become a habit? You might have told me in the chat, but I missed that part. If you don't mind me asking. So the melee usually I shift into people with missiles and left click, and then end with melee. I I just always do it. Maybe muscle memory. Okay, just wondering. No, no worries. It, yeah, that makes sense. It just, it was very delayed, so I was just wondering. So, you can actually make that a little bit quicker, and you can also use melee to cancel your flight, so I was wondering if you were just being, like, kind of, you weren't canceling your flight, um, or a little bit late, so. You can cancel your flight with both your melee and your, uh, your shift, or, well, your booster thing, or whatever you want to call it. So. Okay. Oh, tire, tire? Yeah. Eh, I'm okay with that. I usually try to take the tire for my team. I usually try to take the tire for my team. Such pausing? Yeah, pausing is important. I mean, it's about getting better. It's not about me watching for 20 minutes and saying like five things and be like, oh, there's my forward review. Hee hee. See, now you're going for your suit, getting it back. Good job shooting the tire because uh, that trap, because I generally get trapped all the time in my games. So your Reinhardt got aggressive. You're out of suit. Is there anything you can do here? Like, all I would say to you is just keep doing what you're doing. You're playing smart. You're staying at the bridge. You're not trying to get aggressive, which is really good. You got your suit back, and then now you're... Hanzo so one, Hanzo one. Oh, they got a main now. Focus main, please. Should we get May down? May? Is that a mech? Um. Alright guys. Before we talk about the ultimate, let's talk about style points. What do we give him? I give him a 10. You gotta give him 10 for style. You gotta give him 10 for style points. That's a 10 out of 10 right there. That's, that was some style right there. You styled on them, dude. You didn't get anybody with it, but you know what? If your teammates saw that, dude, they would have been proud of you. If you were on a stream doing that, that would have been a lot of lules in the chat for my chat. A lot of question marks, but a lot of lules too. So, I like that one. I like that one. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah, so you can just use that ultimate down middle, and it's way better than that. Straight up. You can do the same exact move. Just do it down middle, and it'll actually zone the point, and you'll get kills. Um, or you'll probably get the point because they can't go on the point. Or you'll, at the very worst, break the Maywall or something like that. You lose something effective that isn't just ulting up top there. Um, that was pretty good, though. I actually like that. See, I like that, though. I love that. You, you tried styling on him, man. That's that's good. I, I I would just recommend going down middle next time. And I think you'll have a little bit more value. I actually like the way you did it. You, you actually, a lot of people struggle with, like, getting it through windows. So you did get it through the window, which was good. But, yeah, I would recommend going right right here, the this part with the, the ult. Okay, anyway. Lost the point there. I mean, that's just 2 CP for you. I'm not going to even comment on that. You've been told not to go mid? Why? Right, guys. You have the point. Why would you not go down mid? 
Who told you that? The hell? Going mid again, or? Oh, you told him? Oh, that was me? <laughs> okay, taking high ground control. I like it. I like it. Um, I still want you to... Uh, what I want you to do, Tilly, uh, Tilly, in my last VOD review, I talked about floating. I want you to learn how to start floating a little bit more. I feel like you would uh, actually benefit from it based off of your style. Um, right there, though, a little bit too aggressive. Obviously, I'm not going to... I mean, you know that, right? Like, you got the high ground control, but you probably need to communicate with your teammates better and, like, get the high ground together because if you try to do a solo play like that, I do that, I do that sometimes on stream, and I get so frustrated at myself. Um, so work on your... Work with your teammate. Like, work with your teammates. Um, to like get the high ground control together and then make that play where you kind of go on the solo missions or you can just mid, okay. charge down mid and then to go with the Rhine. Run back up? Oh, you're done. All right. Um, I do want to point out, I'm trying to get people in the habit of that. You do need to say big slam there. That's a very important part there. Um, but, you know, potato, potato. Take the high ground control here with your teammates. This is, this is better, this is better. Now remember there is a Roadhog who has been going for some hooks, so for now you just want to maintain this high ground. All you want to do is maintain. You don't need to go overdo it. Wait for all six people to be back, get your Ana and your Zen. Okay, never mind, this is way too advanced. Just just stay up here and don't take too much poke damage because they're not going for the high ground control. Got that again. Oh, nice eight. eat on the Hanzo. I can tell you did it on purpose, which is bring even more up, impressive to me. Keep on him, keep on him. I vault, I vault. That was really, really good. May oh, ulta now though, and you guys are going to be frozen. Um, nothing you can really do about this one. Let's just just die. Down. I got mine ready. Just die. Okay. I also have mine. And reset. There we go. Good communication. Now, if you want to start working on good habits, hit tab and communicate what ultimate you want to use. Once again, you have two people out of voice chat won't work. But it's a good habit to develop. You're also at gold, so like try to develop that. I mean, I know that like right now it's more about mechanical and a little bit of decision making, so remember that. Like some of the stuff I say is just for people who are like, hey, I'm masters right now and I want to get better. Well, that's my advice. Hit tab, talk about your ultimates, work on what you want to do next, and you'll you'll win more often than not. Or you'll lose, uh, but man, then you'll win. You the so you basically, it's ranked. No. Okay. Thank you for shield. We'll talk about sensitivity after. I can't eat that. Okay, good job staying alive there. I like that. You guys played spread. Very, very smart. All right, I'm going to try to pressure them over here. Where's that man? Okay. I heard her. Ah! Roadhog's off to the side, you got me. How many do we have up here? We have one, two... Slam from our run. I mean, the other one. So. Alright, you set? Um... Let's try going down mid. Ryan, do you vault? You do? Okay. So... Wait. Yeah, we do have to start the fight. So, Ryan, let me know when you're gonna shatter. Don't correct. Don't engage till you uh, got him flanked in the, at us. Okay. Wait, they're in voice chat now. There's five people in voice chat except for the Ryan. Oh, Ryan's not in voice. Yet. Yeah. Okay. I like um, it, dude. All right. That that's okay. That's Down fine. middle I'll now. Pressure them from up here. I'm gonna throw my ult on point in, in just a second. Here. Okay. 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 I like it. I like it. I like it. I'm gonna. Oh, stunned. Feel bad, man. No, it's okay. You could have ulted that actually right there if you wanted to. Here we go. Here it comes. Here comes the bad boy. Here. Okay, good. All right, so. The reason why I went quiet there for a second for most part of like yeah. what I just witnessed was I didn't really know what to say when they were on the second fight when they were up top like really like here's the thing let me let me kind of talk right. about that's okay we can hold the high grounds of Hatamura because this is the thing the big straightaway the big straightaway okay when I talk about straightaway you know that area when you come up the, when, you, when you go up the stairs on the right hand side and you go to the left it's like a straightaway right it's a, it's literally a straightaway we'll talk about the alt after by the way guys okay we'll talk about the alt after but it's a straightaway all right so you need to Clear that off for the most part, and then the top right people will feel pressured, and then you can take the top right. Right? That's how people usually do it. So what happened there is you get split. Some of you went to the, to the to the left. Some of you went to the right. Somehow communicate to people. And once again, this is it's ranked ninety five percent of the time. I, I said it the other time, people are going to be you know drinking a diet Pabst Blue Ribbon, and they're not even going to be like paying attention to the game. 
But on the off chance that people are listening, take that, take away that Roadhog away from the side. Take away the Mercy. Take away the stuff on the side. And you literally will be way better off doing that. And then the people top right feel pressured. You can kind of poke them a little bit more and then you can kind of like surround them. But once again, this is a little bit advanced stuff. This happens at higher levels, but I'm trying to develop good habits for everybody across all ranks. It's not just about helping a gold player get better. It's about helping everybody get better, right? Like that's the whole idea here. Like we want to all get better. So talking about these strategies, even if it's at a lower level, is good to develop in everybody's mind, right? Um, but overall there, uh, you got to, there's one big thing that every player needs to recognize is the time. If you're in the last fight, use your ultimate. I mean, obviously, you, you didn't use it there, um, and you were doing you know you're doing a lot of good things and, and you know and a lot of things that you can get better at, right? So never take offense to anything that's happened in these games. Like the nature of the vod review is that you're gonna have things that are bad and the things that are good. I could probably whip out one of my vods right now of me playing, and we would have a bunch of lols and we'd have a bunch of you know pogs, right? No one, no one plays perfect in Overwatch, not including myself. I'm sitting in a chair right now watching a video back, so it's easy to like look at it and judge it. But dude, I make mistakes all the time on stream. The amount of times I screw up is unbelievable. So, um, no, 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 no. I, I, putting this type of game out, by the way, Tilly, is really good. Is really good. I just want to point that out. So anyway, um, that was a little bit. Could have been better on. Could have been a little bit better. Um, on that attack and a lot of it was a lack of communication and like game plan but like once again I understand at this level it's harder to get that type of thing everybody I do find that sometimes people might feel a little bit more um, how do I say it there's a lot of egos that happen too we have it at the higher levels but the, the understanding of the game is a lot higher so the egos are a little bit less when it comes to like the game play like what you want to do so I imagine that e the egos can be a little bit aggressive at times at different levels because everybody thinks they know what's what's right or what's better when in reality it's overwatch like it can constantly change and there's sometimes no right or wrong so i understand it can be a lot harder to do that at these levels so that's why i always say like when you're at this level working on your mechanical and like your decision making will help you get better you i always yeah, tell divas to work on both their flight control and their dm management because if I'll you do those, those you can just kind of outplay people regardless <clears throat> so you're cool so far, right, Attili? Are you, are, you, are you getting some things down so far? Right now, Attili? Are you feeling like you're learning some stuff? I just want to make sure. A page of notes. Pog. All right, sounds good. All right, cool, cool. Continue on here. Would you ever do a console vod? It doesn't matter what you're playing on. Um, I want to help. All right, let's continue on. All right, so first point. Once again, you're playing D.Va, so D.Va Reinhardt isn't the strongest. It isn't the worst. Um... And now I told you before that I wanted you to start going for high ground control and stuff like that. In the, on defense of this one, it's okay to be behind the shield initially, because what else are you really going to do? You don't, you can't be in their spawn, you know, trying to pressure them. So you're going to stay behind the Ryan shield. You know, when they start to move in, that's when you want to move up. You want to fly up. If you don't fly up, and that's okay, and we'll talk about that when it happens. But you can stay behind the shield for now on defense because you want to manage your shit a little bit better and you want to help like with some of the control of the map i do recommend hey, zarya on first point but it's okay i like diva second point zarya first point this is okay you can do a little bit of poke here so they have zan they have Ryan. so got roadhog again i just want to point this out you use kind of a you, you went to the spot and you're doing a very 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 minimal damage um, if you're going to do this spot, you use your rockets or something like that because you can get a little bit more value. You built 5% ultimate, you use 75% of your defense matrix. Um, one thing I always talk about is your defense matrix management. You never know what can happen. If they decide, if they had a Lucio or if they just decided to be aggressive right now and your, your DM may not even be up by the time they get back, right? Um, you put a little pressure on your healers. Now, it's okay to take a little bit of poke because your healers can get their ult charge and like Roadhog having his ultimate isn't as effective as a support having an ultimate. So like I get that. But just remember that like you kind of just went there, did very minimal pressure and... Um, you know, basically use a lot of your DM up. So, anyway. Hog is going to probably go for a hook, sir. I would hope so. Yeah. Okay. Now you have no DM. You have no DM left, by the way. So now your Ryan shield is taking yep. a lot of pressure, and you're not able there to help with that. Look at your look at your DM. Hog's up top. And boom. You don't have the DM to be able to I'm consistently to help to... your team there, and now you're demeched. And your teammates have no way of controlling the shields. Now, once again, you have a Symmetra and you really may quick. win the fight. But do you see what happened there with the defense matrix management? How that usage of DM kind of led to you not being able to be in your suit here? That was really good. You know, like, it, it, it's that's why, I mean, it was really good to see that happen because it, you can make an example of it and then hopefully improve from it, right? That's a good thing. 
Yep. We got Good that job Zen. there. Yep. I'm getting the Zen. Nice. Once again, remember, at this point, it's all about taking care of the burst, not the spam. Run back up right? with it. So you've used so much DM, and once again, you have no DM. And you really didn't block much there. Like, you just held right click, right? I had to run away because I didn't know where the hand it was. Anyone have eyes on the fire? Eyes in the sky. Um, that's a situation where if you wanted to chase the uh, Farah, if you actually can learn the float technique, which is where you fly into the air, let, let go of your button, and then you would have actually um, brought yourself back. You can like basically float backwards, and then you can be back in your teammate. Instead, because you like you basically just stopped, you were like like right into them then you basically lost a lot of your HP and then your suit. So if you actually use the flow technique there with a little bit of better DM usage, you would have been fine there. I don't recommend that play at all, but if you do that play, you can get yourself out a little bit by just having good movement, so. All right? So. Anyway. Ryan's back here, can we? Oh, we have a whole thing. Oh, it's a Hanzo! Or Hanzo? Hanzo? Yeah! Let's go! Hell yeah. I love seeing some good baby diva play. Reinhardt to your left, by the way, is a better way to farm up your ultimate. If you see a Reinhardt, shoot at him and you'll get your suit back. He actually wasn't looking at you and you probably would have gotten a kill out of it too. I'll do. I'll show the flow technique one more time after this game, because I talk about it all the time and I want people to get in the habit of it. Hey, you're getting high ground control. I'm not gonna complain. Obviously, the rockets are what I've I've waste rockets all the time. Okay. You can right click your tire, by the way. Here, I don't know what the tire is, but you can actually right click your tire, and uh, it will actually protect it. So you maybe get a kill out of it. Far one, far one. So, that distance that you're trying to kill a Farah at, you won't do anything. You literally won't kill him. There's a mercy right there. You won't kill him. Um, that window is actually very dangerous for D.Va because, like, you don't do enough effective damage at that range. You have to basically look down to be able to, like, really put pressure on people. Um, so, my recommendation is to start to really focus on managing your Ryan shield a little bit more. If the Farrah comes through the window or the Hanzo goes, so you can kind of go up there and take care of them. But you took twice, you've taken way too much poke damage there. And um, obviously you recognize your HP is like important. Like we, we all make that mistake. But you've started to see there isn't much value out of going there and just, you're, you're really not doing anything because it's just, it's too far away, right? Like your range is like medium to close range, right? That's long range. You're not going to do anything to that Farrah. So... Um, I hopefully you learn that going to that window, especially against that comp, just isn't as ideal as you want it to be. And managing your Ryan shield against a Reinhardt Roadhog is probably a little bit more effective. Um, so, anyway, continue on. Big slam. Remember, you could take the TP here actually and start to shoot the Ryan in the back, but it all worked out. I want to give you a little bit of advice. The run has no when you're this close right. to your suit, just just hide. You don't need to overpressure uh -oh, right now, just... and it guarantees <laughs> that nobody will randomly kill you. Now, obviously, you guys have the numbers and stuff like that. But when you're at about 90%, you can just stay safe and guarantee you get your suit. Because how many how many times have you guys had 90% on your like ba your, your, as baby diva, Let's and you peek something and die when you could have just paid it like patient for like four seconds and had your suit Shit, back? We're back in the window again. Now we're out of the window. Roadhog ultimate. You want to? Ah. Eh. Yeah. Let's get on that point and stall that time. Where, where did that go? I actually don't know where that just went. That diva bomb, I don't I don't know. Like, remember that like using the choke is really powerful there, and you could have like ulted forward at them on the ground. You could have ulted like in the air to keep you like your teammates kind of protected. Sometimes you can use your Sometimes you can use your Diva Bomb. Um like to just make keep your teammates like alive. Like you don't even need to get kills. Like a diva bomb adds the threat 
to like the other team, right? And it gives your teammates time to manage your shield again, to give them you know HP back and give you like an even fight, as well as having full. When you use your ult, believe it or not, when you use your ultimate and you get back into it, you actually have full defense matrix back. You have full HP, so you actually get a little bit more benefit from that if you're in a weird situation and in like a four v four like that where you can actually still win the fight. So you could have still won that fight if you actually use the diva suit. Um, correctly, like if you use your diva alt correctly, in reality you could have actually held first point. I'm just saying so. We'll talk about the sensitivity at the end, Mighty, and we'll give him kind of pointers and stuff like that. What I like to do is talk about things in the game and then kind of summarize what I think can be working at the end. Because it's basically this. You have the VOD review section and you have the TLDR, right? Some people like the VOD review, some people like the TLDR. It's that simple. Like, it's just that simple. So I like to do that at the end for people to help him out and kind of be like, hey, this is what you need to work on. It helps a lot, and it, it lets people remember some of the stuff. Yes, when you use your D.Va ultimate, you get your uh, defense matrix back, and that's really important. So you can, uh, it used to be back in the day where you could actually, believe it or not, back in, like, uh, Season 5 or so. Yeah, Season 5, Season 4, players, including myself, even though people thought I was a Roadhog one trick, even though I was known to have a good D.Va, <laughs> not going to get to that, um, you would actually use your ultimate, just to get your DM back because DM was so ridiculously strong because it lasted really long. So, yeah, that was how defense meters used to be, and you can still use that pretty effectively. So, yep. Anyway, continuing on here. Oh my god, you flew across here. I thought you were gonna. This is gonna be. Okay, so that, you know what? I kind of like the aggression. Once again, if you work on your movement in, in the air, I think you'll do a lot better overall. Uh, Farah's being healed here. She's got more. Ah. I don't know why I must be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, it's all good, dude. You know what? If it makes you feel any better, by the time you spawn up, you'll be back. Trust me. That was a... <laughs> it was a little bit ambitious. It was a little bit ambitious. Um, my recommendations is don't do that one, but you did say I don't know why I'm up here, but you know what? It's all good. Your melee and spray are the same key, so you spray and melee? That's an interesting one. Uh, now that... Okay, listen. I wanna talk about this now. So, this is something that's very important. You just got a big kill on Farah. You, if you take this high ground control as D.Va, you're going to have massive value from up here because you can not only go through the windows and flank their Zen and kind of insta-give them or the healers, you have the ability to shoot them as they cross the bridge. You have the ability to like take control of it. You can DM without them seeing you. It's super. There's a lot of strength to taking this high ground when nobody's up there. Um, you can literally make plays that like you normally can't make if you're just right here. Like They can't even see you defense matrix, defense matrix in them, which is really strong. You can come from... but you can. Um, you can, I was gonna say, never mind. You can basically come down and, and pressure their supports. You can cause a lot of uh, issues um, by taking that high ground up here. So you definitely should go for that, especially considering nobody's up there. And I think you'll do uh, a good job. So let's continue on here. So far, you haven't done that. Break. Um, one thing I love to call for here is, is, is breaking Winston bubbles. Now, obviously the Winston went by, but Taking out Winston Bubbles is one of the most underrated things I have ever seen in, like, Overwatch. The amount of people, the amount of games I win because of just breaking Arista Shield or Winston Bubbles is significantly higher than the teams that don't. Winston Bubbles can cause such a ruckus if you don't break them, and people ignore them. Like, well, it's just a Winston Bubble. Like, what's, what's, what's it going to do? Block my healers and make it so it's harder for me to, like, actually get the kill on the guy? Like, you can shred the Winston Bubbles. You can shred the Arista Shields. Do that and just comment. Be like, hey, break the Winston Bubble. Break the Winston Bubble. And I guarantee you, you'll see in, in the... Yeah, an insane amount of success with those shields being down. The idea of Winston is that his Winston bubble is supposed to cause issues, but if it dies in half a second, he's just sitting there going, oh, look at me, right? So, that's my opinion, of course. Once again, you could be abusing the high ground a little bit here. Um... But well, you do have the ultimates to follow up, which is okay. Uh, try and pressure the Mercy here now. Remember, one little tip I'll give you is that no matter how much damage nice. you do to a Mercy, if you shoot her for... Um, just shoot her, she can't regenerate Mars, HP. Huh? Mercy regens her HP by being out of combat. So a lot of D.Va players, you actually can just kind of just keep shooting her the whole time, and she actually can't heal back up unless somebody else heals her. But a lot of time, nobody heals the other Mercy because they assume the Mercy can regen. So you can get some free kills on Mercy, like kind of like poke at them, and eventually they like they have to like do something else. Make sure to pay attention to your Yo, HP here. Um, I would have stayed high ground though initially because flying back there could have been dangerous going across the middle like that. But yeah, oh, they're, up, they're up top. They're up top. Jump one down. Okay. Remember what we've talked about top with the high ground. Remember what we've talked about with the high ground. Okay. I would love to see you go for more high ground control at this point. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. That, 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 that's fine. Don't even get mad about that. That's just unlucky. Just I know what you're trying to do. Push back. Nothing you can do about that one. But you you try to make a play that I would have probably made too. You could have DM'd a little bit longer and then made the play a little bit easier, but against Roadhogs, like you can time your DM a little bit better. Like and you can pretty much eat their ultimate after the initial burst damage out of them, and then you're good to go, so. It's okay. You know, if you want to sure, develop ball. good habits, call targets. Not much target calling going on. Um, this is for any level, you know, call the Winston, call the Roadhog. Get people to be on the yep. same thing. I know you have a Symmetra and a Junkrat, but it's good. To, it's good to have good habits of, of target calling or shot calling. That is, or yeah, target calling. Sorry. So, once again, we're still staying on the point. I would love to see you take the high ground and make sure to definitely write this down. Taking that high ground is so important as Diva. It's one of my favorite spots in all of Hanamura. I love second point Hanamura on defense because of being able to sit on that high ground the whole time. I don't think so, Steel. We'll talk about all that stuff after. Yay! Okay, be a little bit smart, you know? You don't have to overdo it. You don't, you don't have to peek it like this. Uh, I stood up here, Dylan. What the? <laughs> Why is there a Winston there? Top. So you, one thing I will say to you, and this is for any player, you do have a tendency to try to do too much. Uh, when you peek small little choke windows, that isn't Diva's but Diva does not benefit from just sitting in a window and like just doing that. Like, take the high ground and just control it to the extent where they can't go through the windows. You can fly, you can hit, you can boop them at an angle and never have to worry about like them having the high ground until they come up as six. Then you can just fly away or take the other high ground or like move around the map and be like evasive, right? Um, you definitely seem to have like a tendency to try to go in these little windows and do too much. Don't don't try to do too much there. You're trying to just like control the high ground don't try to control the courtyard does that make sense because when you have map control in overwatch you win a lot more than you lose like map control is super key and you have the mobility to escape so when you give away your suit just at a window trying to make a play like that like you're just you're not playing you're playing it like a uh, like you're like a, a widow going for a quick pick right like just just get map control diva has so much how do i say diva has so much map control and the availability to move around and, and take areas that like you should definitely just kind of like stay there and do exactly what somebody just said scout their team you know call cooldowns play it smart and then when you're, it's your time to pounce make the play right like make the play but you're trying to just go and do individual plays that just aren't going to lead to an overall success like, especially when it comes to diva suit um so yeah and when they have do they have a zen do you know um Yeah. Can't even think about that. That's just the product of losing your suit. Came back out to the pointer. Target call. Mercy. Okay, what's next? What do we got next? Farrah. Farrah. Farrah left side. Farrah left side. Farrah left side. Okay, nice. Farrah down. Mori use fade. Mori no fade. See? Just doing basic calls that I would possibly do if I was playing in the situation. Okay, nice. We got the we got the uh, Hanzo. There's 18 seconds left. They're gonna have to run to point. Uh, more on point. Make sure to use your ultimates. Right, try to eat that. Right, remember right, when you're playing Morius, try to eat the healing orb or the damage orb as it completely like gets rid of a kit. Okay, guys. They don't have a full there's only six seconds down. left. They're gonna run yeah. to the point. They're being aggressive. Just just kill whoever comes in. Can't do anything. And there you go. Jeez. See. Stuff. Is melee boost canceled? Boost same speed of shift. Uh, I can check it for you. I'm pretty sure it does. So, and then make sure you just randomly endorse people, no matter what. Yep, that guy was a good teammate. Wasn't a voice chat. Oh, oh, that was our Ryan. Thanks. Good job. Good heals too. All right. Nice. Call bunch of teammates. And there we go. Cool. There we go, Tilly. See. We did it! Hanamura! These callouts are good? Yep. Yeah. They're definitely it's just simple callouts that you need to do. It's it's literally it's literally simple callouts. Like that's all it is. Like there's nothing there's nothing over the top. There's nothing like, oh my god, I need to, you don't need to go out of your comfort zone. Like it's all about just developing good habits. Um You did good, man. Listen, dude, props to anybody who posts a VOD, because you know what? My chat will have some fun with Can we get some question marks in the chat for Tilly for some of those ultimates? Just to give it to him one more time. Just, just give it to him one more time. <laughs> See? There you go, bud. See? 
in the end, like it's really it's really cool because like you're going out of your comfort zone, you're learning the game, and you're being judged by not only me but a bunch of people, and that's that's props to you, man. So. One thing I like to do at the end of these VODs now is kind of show you guys what I've talked about a little bit. To summarize, and once again, Nocta, you can keep this summarized part in. I really want you to work on your movement again. Like, diva movement is super key to being a great diva, in my opinion, and your defense matrix management. Once again, this is something I'm going to stress probably every single VOD review because it's one of the biggest differences I see in great divas and divas who are trying to get better. The one thing I will also say is, like, I think your sensitivity... How do I say this? your sensitivity might be a little bit too, um, I don't know if you're quite at the right sensitivity for what you're looking for. So maybe try to lower or higher it a little bit just because I think that you seem to be a little bit, it's, not, it's, like, it's, like, it's like this, like it feels like you're trying to catch up to something too much. So you're like, you go over here and then you like over aim and then like you have to reset yourself. So it might be too fast, it might be too, it, it's probably too fast. So maybe turning it down just a little bit and working on that would be better. Um, once again, I'm gonna go through this every single time with you guys when it comes to like the technique. The, the one thing I love with Diva Moon, right, is you can do anything, right? You can be like elusive, right? But what I've been doing a lot more now is the float. And, and, and I've been trying to get people to use it because I, I see how effective I've basically managed to get like one one or two less, less like DMX or one or deaths, excuse me, because I've been having my movement's been improving, right? So like doing things like this and then being able to like float yourself, right? Your cooldown comes back quicker. So I always tell people about the float technique, like I can go here, fly forward, do a play, and then back up like that, see? So if I want to go up here, I would go a little bit like this, fly up, and then just back up, see? Now I'm up there, and I already gained my cooldown, I'm two seconds quicker, and I'm back to where I want to be, right? Does that make sense? So I try to get people to work on the flow technique. Uh, you can work on your ultimates with this little circle thing. See that right there? See the circle? So for example, when I fly into the air, you see that circle? You can use that to judge your ultimates. So, yeah. That's why, that's why I always talk about the flow technique. Remember, your rockets are projectile. See? Projectile. See that? Projectile. They're not hit scan like this. They're not hit scan like this. They're not hit scan like this. You need to lead with these rockets, especially at range, right? So if I want to get them, you lead with them. So a lot of these things that people forget about with Divas, they use it as a hit scan. I've seen people do it with rockets all the time. Your rockets are super effective. Um, stuff like that. This. And you can do work on your ultimates. Go up like that. So. That's it. Another VOD review done, baby. Feels good, man. Hope you learned a lot of Tilly. Like I said, work on those things. Defense major management is super key. Remember, you have about time for you. So say I right click once. Twice. Another time. You basically have four right clicks, right? If you let go of it. You can get away with a little bit here, but like you have four right clicks. So you have to really prioritize what you want to do with those right clicks and understand that it's not like it used to be. If you just do this, like yeah, it, it's gonna be you just you wanna do that when like a bunch of burst is coming. Like, oh my god, they're diving in. You know, I see a diva flying at my healer, and there's a tracer, and you're just like this, right? That's effective DM because you're you're keeping your healer alive, and they're they're using all their cooldowns just to get to him. And you can counter peel with your rockets and your movement and stuff like that, right? You know what I'm saying? Remember, you can boot people at, with the diva suit. You can, you know, uh, there's a melee combo trick you can do that I do all the time, where you hit fly melee, and look at that, I'm still flying, right? I do that all the time. I bursted down Genji's doing this type of move. So literally, watch fly melee. And that's a slow time. I do it really fast, so you can't even see the animation. So, like, if I was to fly and then melee, watch this. See? You can do that. You can do all this stuff. I would love another one from about two weeks from now, Attili, to see the improvement of, of you. Um, and we can go from there, right? Let's, let's see that improvement in about two weeks, Attili. I would love another VOD in about two weeks. Um, and I, I would definitely love that, so. Yeah. So, you can definitely learn a lot about, like, Eva in general. Eva has like, this mobility that, like... A lot of people don't understand, and once you get that down, you're a lot harder to play against, right? Like, everybody can aim and stuff like that, right? You take, you know, you can practice your aim and get better with it, and that's why I recommend that level. But like, in the end, when you want to be a better player, developing good habits is, is A, and developing, you know, mechanical skill that's different from the rest is really good, too. Like I said, the, you know, having good movement as D.Va, being able to float around and control myself is really key to my team to get better. So,